Chase the boy from your terminal. Right, come on. Look at the tape. Look at the tape. Consular revealed plans to reverse almost all provisions made in the budget, including top rate tax. This is a full scale rollback. Repeat, they've set fire to their plans. Fuck. Sterling is running here. It is gapping up. He's gapping up, buddy. Oh, my God. Talk about an emergency rate hike. Oh. The NPC are raising rates by 200 basis points. You are fucking kidding me. The biggest rise in, in, in UK interest rates in 27 <laughs> years. Sterling back through our level now. We're in profit. I need to offer the position ASAP. Could someone get me out of this long, please? Yo, 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 what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week. Last week, had a good weekend, got to rest your brains, all that good stuff. Last week was yet again another crazy week in the stock market. We definitely had some good plays, I would say. We were looking at NVIDIA calls, which did very well, but honestly, I was looking for it to dip just a little bit lower, closer to 100 to 97 zone, maybe even a little bit closer to that trend line we went over. And first thing Monday, it gapped up and kind of left everybody in the dust. So you probably needed to go long first thing Monday to really capture that move. So NVIDIA unfortunately took off without me, but if you had the balls to go ahead and just go long, regardless of testing that zone or trend line, you got paid very well. We were also looking at TGT calls, which kind of had a mixed week. It broke through the moving averages that I was hoping it would hold up. But then on Friday, gapped up pretty aggressively and did close right back over all those moving averages and also actually actually closed with a breakout. So Target's going to make its way back into our list again this week. I want to keep an eye on it again. Since we have a confirmed breakout, we're back over the EMAs and it looks pretty good compared to a lot of other things. So Target will be on our list again. Maybe I will alert to play on it. Not exactly sure yet, but we'll see how the week goes. And last but not least, we also had Dollar General, ticker symbol DG. This one we did end up taking. We took a January 80 call position, ended up closing that for about 45% total. I think we made a about $360 per contract on DG. I unfortunately only took one contract. I wish I took a couple so I could have sold a partial and held some more, but I went ahead and closed out that one contract for about 45% and DG did very good. So for Dollar General, it's still a really good play, honestly. There's still a lot of retrace room, lots of room to the upside, unfilled gap. Might take a really good earnings quarter to kind of get back up into that gap. But if you're patient, buy lots of time. I think the consumer could bounce back eventually with the Fed starting to cut rates soon, hopefully for a good reason, not because they see the economy tanking. Maybe we can get some buy side and the consumer and they'll start spending a little bit more and you'll see that reflect in Dollar Tree and Dollar General and some other retailers that are kind of lacking performance compared to Walmart or Costco. And for trades or alerts on our Xtrades app, we started out kind of a little bit rough on Monday. QQQ, I tried a 451 call scalp, stopped out for about 40% on that one, then tried to flip. It went for a QQQ 455 put, had a tight stop for about 23% loss on that one. Bounced back the next day with a QQQ 455 call, made about 30% on that day after that we took three trades on qqq first one being a 452 call had a tight stop of about 22 percent on that one then took another qqq 451 call made about 34 percent on that one and last but not least for that day a 458 put where we made about 20 percent on that one and then one more here on nasdaq qqq took a 466 call made about 25% on that one. And then our best trade of the week is gonna be that Dollar General 80 call, we made about 45.6% on that one. So we got three losses with five wins. Nice little four win streak we got going. Little rough patch at the beginning, but that's okay. We usually bounce back from that. And probably just gonna be looking to trade QQQ, day trade QQQ still next week, while maybe opening up a new longer term position with this DG capital that we freed up. So we'll have about $1,100 to put into something, maybe long term, or just a longer date it doesn't have to be a long-term position just a longer day expiration with a little bit lower risk all right now to the economic calendar we actually have a pretty big week. So Tuesday, we're starting off pretty strong with retail sales. This has definitely been moving us a lot more than the past. I feel like the market's very focused on the consumer and how they're doing. So retail sales, probably going to be a high impact data set. Pay attention to that at 830. It looks like the medium forecast is negative 0.3 with previous being at 1%. And then on Wednesday, we have the FOMC. I'm almost positive they're going to do 25 basis points for a cut. Some people are speculating 50, but I feel like they're probably going to start out gradually. 25 basis points is good then maybe they can get a little bit more rapid depending on the inflation data because if we get too deflationary then they're gonna have to to maintain that two percent target but for right now i feel like inflation's at a pretty good spot i don't think we're collapsing massively 
on the CPI. It's been a pretty steady trend down. So they'll probably do 25 basis points. Labor market's not awful either just yet. I mean, unemployment, I think at 4.2%. So nothing too crazy. They could probably do 25 basis points and be fine. And then, of course, at 2.30, Jay Powell will come out. So 2 p.m. will have a knee-jerk reaction. I usually don't trade the 2 p.m. decision right away. I wait for 2.30. Volatility comes. Lots of whips up. Big moves. Big candles for Jerome Powell. And then on Thursday, just our usual initial jobless claims, the Philly Fed survey, and also existing home sales at 10. I don't think these are really going to move the market. I feel like the day after FOMC is probably just going to be a bacon day. Everybody's going to be trying to price in what happened the day before. You'll see that news settling in the day after as well. So you'll definitely see some volatility the day after FOMC. All right, on to seasonality for the week. Last week, we had a little bit more of a bullish tilt according to the 20 year data set so we went into last week pretty much just a little bit more bullish than bearish at least i was i was looking for a potential dead cat bounce in the indexes we did get that but now we're kind of coming into something different here so you might have to look at the markets in a different way a little bit more cautiously you could see on the 10 year data set here we have winning trades at 60 percent with a summarized profit at nine percent for short trades so pretty profitable for shorts or bears here for this period the last 10 years we'll have to see how that goes but it's not looking great for this period all the way down into basically october and then at the beginning of october you can see a nice tick up another flush and a very big bounce going into the end of the year all the way up into November and the start of December. So a little rough patch here for seasonality. Obviously the indexes don't look that bad. We bounced pretty good last week. Spy is basically back at all time high resistance. We'll have to watch that very carefully. We'll go over that later, but I mean, the market doesn't look like it's going to do this pattern, but I guess you really never know. This is a very weak period for the market historically. So we're definitely going to want to pay attention and be a little bit more cautious. Is this hinting at a FOMC sell off? Who knows? We'll have to see how that goes. And then for the 20 year data set, it's actually a little bit different. You can kind of see a little downtick going into the 17th, another little uptick up into the 19th. And then after the 19th, that's when it really picks up to the downside, probably after that 920 options expiration, which makes sense because usually the window of weakness comes after a big options expiration on the monthly dates. So like September, December, pretty much quarterly expirations usually have the big, big kind of swings after they expire. So we're kind of getting a warning here on the 10 year and the 20 year data set looking a little bit iffy going into October for sure. And then when October comes, there's kind of a value area to really buy going into the end of the year. It's probably a really good area to load stocks, especially strong indexes like SPY, QQQ, good individual stocks like Microsoft, Apple, stuff like that, that does really good into the end of the year. So hopefully we'll kind of get that pattern play out to the downside, get a nice discount going into the end of the year. We can load up by a couple months and get some nice upside off the discount. But that's for seasonality this week, a little bit bearish, kind of a neutral bearish tilt. Be careful this week. Who knows how it's going to go? All right. And for our first idea here, we're going to go over Target again. So last week we were kind of focused on this little EMA cluster we had. We had the 9, the 21, the 50, the 200, all kind of in the same spot. You can see this breakdown candle here closed under, and it even went all the way as low as 145, basically. So that close under did give us some more downside as expected. And then we were able to catch a bid here going into Thursday and also going into Friday. Once Friday came around, you can see we confirmed a breakout here. So this setup is back in play. And honestly, it's really not changed from last week. So it was looking a little bit scary at first, but now we're kind of back in play here. So the same thing as last week, I'm kind of looking for a bounce, some more retracement back up to 157 or so. That's kind of this res area and also this previous support and breakdown area. So once 157 got lost, you can see that's when downside picked up. So we can look for 157, 156.90s, whatever you want to call it. You could even move it like this so 156 40s that's this little candle low right here basically the previous gap support short-term bounce flush area so that's for tgt looking at calls again basically unchanged from last week this was in our list and i just didn't get a good entry or something i felt good about so i didn't enter tgt last week we took dollar general instead so keep it on watch nice breakout back above the EMA cloud. So you're back above your nine, your 21, your 50, your 200, your overall the EMAs again. So looking pretty good, we're looking at calls. All right, number two, we're on to Baidu, which I'm honestly a little bit hesitant to put out, but we do have a nice little clear breakout going on here. I'm really hesitant on anything China. Anytime I've looked at anything China this year, whether it's the FXI ETF, whether it's BABA, whether it's Baidu, they have all shit to bed and invalidated any technicals I've been looking at. So just watch with caution 
on Baidu or really anything China related. They're very good at looking good and then totally turning on you. So Baidu is pretty straightforward. You got a breakout, kind of a little low point and then a kind of a little higher low here that it's trying to bottom out. You do have a lot of EMAs in the way. So your nine EMA cloud, your 21 EMA cloud, and then this is your 34 to 50 EMA cloud. Here's your 100 and here's your 200 EMA cloud. So we're under basically all of them, except for this nine EMA cloud. It probably will need to get over the 21 part. So you're probably going to need to get over 8430s, something like that. One good thing, MACD is positive. Actually, two good things. You got the breakout like this and also the MACD positive. So that's good. It looks like you have found pretty good support at 80. It's probably a psychological level. Really gnarly bounce off 80s here. Short term bounce off 80s here. And overall, it just looks pretty good. Like if this this was any other sector in America or really any other stock, I would like this. So I'm kind of just trying to keep that in mind and still be willing to take some risk here on China, even though I hate these names because they always fake out. So Baidu, I'm looking at calls, probably longer dates to deal with any bullshit, any drawdown risk. If it wants to break 80 and you took a four month call and this doesn't work out and for some reason it starts breaking 80, the loss probably wouldn't be that bad if you have four months to expiration like January, maybe a little bit longer. I feel like the January expiration is pretty good right now. We took the January calls on Dollar General and it paid pretty good still. I think we made like six or 7% on the underlying stock and it still paid 45%. If we did anything shorter and we got six or 7% on the underlying, would have been like 100% plus, but that's the price you pay to buy safety. So buy safety, January expiration minimum. This is Baidu, lots of room to the upside. You got a big res level here at about 90.45. You can see the 50 EMA cloud or the 34 to 50 EMA cloud rejected at this area. So that probably will be an issue up at this area. But once it gets over that, probably get up to 90.45. And that's the max projection point I could see for right now. If it got over 90.45, you got a gap all the way up here. So lots of potential, just not there yet. So keep Baidu on watch. Nice breakout, MACD positive, good support at 80s. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over Microsoft. I'm kind of looking at this as a potential head and shoulders play. I'm watching this 430 area as a potential rejection point. This play will kind of be my hedge on the market if the market does go bearish and I want to look for a nice put play. Let's say, you know, FOMC doesn't go great. Markets are selling off. I like this Microsoft play back down if this turns into a second shoulder. So if you're new, and you don't know what a head and shoulders is, it's a bearish pattern. You get one shoulder or a resistance area. You get the breakout or the head comes back down. It makes a neckline. So you got support, support. That's your neckline. And then you get a second shoulder usually, and then it'll come back down. And once it breaks the neckline, then you're confirmed. That is a confirmed head and shoulders. So this is a speculation play. This is not a confirmed head and shoulders. Let me be very clear about that. You can always speculate that a second shoulder gets made, but it's not confirmed. It's not confirmed until you break the neckline all the way down here. You can kind of see a little head and shoulders here as well. So there's a shoulder head and then that second shoulder trying to form here but if you zoom out on the one week it still looks like it's forming so it's all about how you look at it but i'm not saying this is a high probability setup or anything like that it's not my favorite setup but it's very hard to find stuff this week and given the bearish seasonality tilt that we're looking at here going into october so 430 wants to reject and we fill up all these buy imbalance candles that could be a really good play back down to, you know, 400 and 388 if it wants to reject. But otherwise, I mean, Microsoft kind of held up all its EMAs on the one day. So we had a brief period under the 200 day EMA cloud. We had a break under the 200 day EMA cloud right here as well. But once we claimed back over it, got to close over it, that set us up. Now we're back over all the EMAs. We're over the 9, the 21, the 50, and the 200. MACD also positive. So like I said, this is not a high probability setup for downside, but with FOMC coming up, and if it doesn't go good for some reason and people go risk off, this could turn into a shoulder and it could be a really good play. So I'll probably look at maybe November expiration, pretty small play, kind of keep it as a hedge for downside, not over lever on it or anything like that. Because you are speculating that the shoulder will get formed. It's not a confirmed head and shoulders until it breaks the neckline once again. So that's for Microsoft looking at puts, but wait for that signal rejection at 430 with a one day close under 430. So if you reject 430 and it closes under, that increases your probability to go back down. So that's for Microsoft looking at puts very cautiously, just in case the market does want to pull back. I'll just keep an eye on it for now. Not really rushing into an entry just yet. All right, and on to the indexes. So last week on SPY, we were kind of focused on this 537.45. I mentioned this looked good as a support 
looked pretty good for a potential bounce zone. We didn't really exactly tap it on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or anything, but we did go down to it kind of on Friday late. So if you look at this with after hours data, you can kind of see we did get to that on Friday and that kind of set us up for that bounce. So regardless if we tapped it or not last week, it did hold up and we did get that dead cap bounce up into 555 plus. Had a very big dip here as well, back down to 540 really big rip off of that just a crazy week so last week i was mostly all long focused i mean you saw i've traded mostly qqq calls took dollar general calls and i think we took one put and we made 20 percent on it but otherwise i was mostly long focused we had qqq really close to a big demand zone which we'll go over next we had spy kind of holding up that 537.45 even though we didn't really get an exact tap off of it we did get a really big kind of double bottom i guess you could see this big wick off of the 540s that really pushed us up into all-time high area again so this 537.45 and also this demand zone and this demand zone was kind of our potential buy zones if we got down there obviously we didn't and then for upside we only had that 555 which is this resistance area right here and previous structure low support right here big flush zone right there so if you did go long last week your target should have been 555 max so that was the highest i could project until we saw on thursday and we broke over it on thursday then you could project up to supply simple as that you go one level at a time my max expectation was 555 if i wanted to see upside just due to this past level right here and we got more than that you can also kind of see the 100 ema cloud right here held up pretty nice as well so that could have been a pretty good support to buy off as well i like these ema clouds better than the other ones I was using. It's more smooth, not as many crazy lines. So you got your nine, your 21, your 34 to 50. Here's your 100 and your 200. And they're just more clean. So MACD is back positive. That's a plus for bulls, but we are at supply now. So I'm kind of a little bit hesitant at this area. We might be able to reject at some point. I don't know how I feel about entering a put up here just yet, but if you were looking for a hedge on the market, this is the spot to do it. So we had that rally based drop zone right here which rejected back here. And now we have a new rally base drop right here from this base candle. And that's where we're at right now. So we're at a mix of this base candle and this base candle. And that gives us this whole red zone right here. So this is the danger zone, kind of an area you want to be cautious at. I definitely don't go long inside supply. If I do want to go long, I'll either wait for the breakout or I'll wait for a dip, a higher low, and I'll add there. So I don't really buy into zones in anticipation of a breakout. It's just not how I trade. Some people do. Some Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It works really good in stupid markets where people are just panic buying everything like COVID, like 2020, 2021 era. But otherwise you wanna be a little bit careful at these zones as you saw last time. So I was not telling anybody to buy or that I was looking to buy when it was up here. And you can see why. I mean, we had multiple tests at supply that ended up in a big rejection to the downside kind of have to treat this area the same thing again now that we're back at it i'm going to be cautious maybe look for a little dip nothing crazy right now if it does go down i can see the 455 max nearest buy level with multiple tests multiple times we've traded at it you got rejection support support flush so a very active level kind of the median line so bullish over bearish under once we got over it on thursday nice little push-up bar once we got below it right here really big flush we can also mark this new 540 since it's so strong this 540 to 537.45 will be a pretty good area of focus if we come back down to it in the future so that's your focus for this week we're at supply be careful obviously it will need to break all-time high it's as simple as that if you want to see the market go higher that all-time high break is key if you want to see the market lower the supply is the area to do it see a short-term rejection back down to 555 max if we break under 555 projection down to 540s all right and on to qqq so last week we were kind of just focused on this big demand zone here which we didn't really get down into maybe we touched it on friday kind of like what we saw with spy at the 537s let's see real quick so yeah we actually did touch it i really wish i showed you guys this last week but i had no idea i wasn't looking at after hours data so here was our test into the demand zone we were focused on last week it happened on friday you could probably see it on the futures a little bit better as well but either way i was kind of just more focused on a dead cap bounce this week the seasonality was telling us that was probably going to happen we had pretty good support areas and the vix kind of stalled out at 23 which we went over as well the main thing it really needed to get back over was that 455 so that was this little previous support right here big flush zone right here big breakout area right here so 455 has kind of been a median line of sorts bearish under bullish over and then once we started closing over that on tuesday you can see we kind of started to pick up in the market, closed at about 4.58 or so. 
We did get a dip under on Wednesday, but then got back over. And you can just see the respect at 455. I mean, first thing Monday, we pulled into 455, it rejected. We pulled into it again, it rejected. Kind of got over it right here, but then flushed under very aggressively. Once we got back over it right here, upside. Once again, flushed under 455, more downside. Once we closed over it right here, ripped back up. So lots of turbulence at the 455 on Monday, also Tuesday, and a couple of flushes under on Wednesday as well. So the 455 was the main thing to reclaim. QQQ was able to do that. You also had a little downtrend line. I didn't mark this last week for some reason. You had a test one, a test two. Didn't really get that test three rejection to make it a good trend line, but either way, there's an obvious trend here that we broke out of. So now we're at 475.55. This is a previous res area also kind of a bounce zone here short-term bounce right here so 475 is kind of key to get over to get back to that 484 and then 484 is kind of the max upside i could see if we do go a little bit higher obviously qqq has way more upside to all-time highs than spy does but either way this 484 is a big rejection zone we rejected it right here we had a pop and drop right here as well so the 484 is just a huge level as well as this 475 previously back here. So 475, 55 is going to be your first thing to focus on since we're directly at it. Not exactly sure how the futures will open, but that will depend. Maybe we'll gap over it, get up to 484. Then you can look for a rejection at that area. Not exactly sure how the open will go, but we'll have to see. I would just definitely draw out these levels. Your 484, 40s, your 475, 55. You got your 455 from over here. You got your rally base, rally demand zone here. So it's basically the same levels as last week, just at a new spot and a new zone. And then for right now, QQQ back over all its important EMAs, your 9, your 21, your 50, your 100. It's back over all those and also held over that 200 EMA as well. So it doesn't look too bad, but we are kind of getting into an area on SPY. And then QQQ is pretty close to 484, which could be an issue. But honestly, SPY is probably at the biggest zone right now with that big supply. You're definitely going to be careful at that spot. Likewise, for QQQ, just watch the 475 and also watch 484. Not exactly sure if there's a setup that I see that I like right now at the moment, but I'll probably still scalp it regardless, intraday, stuff like that. I just don't see like a swing that I really care for on the SPY or QQQ just yet. SPY, I do kind of like further outputs since it's at supply for now. NASDAQ, I would like to see get up to 484 before I thought about a put play, but we'll have to see. You know, 475 does reject aggressively enough. I could definitely go short there as well, but we'll have to see. For right now, I don't really see a swing I like on it, but but just for right now, paying attention to 475s and also 484s. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over the VIX. So last week, we were really just focused on that 2308. It either needed to reject, which first thing Monday it rejected, or we wanted to see it close back over 20 to see more downside so obviously we didn't get that close over 23 first thing monday very big rejection you can see it moved under 21s very aggressively as well that's another reason to kind of be bullish got a really big wick and fall right here off 21s again and overall just respected our 2308 from back here in october of 2023 and also respected 21 from april of 2024 so here was the first thing monday gap down in vix see it kind of tested it here in the pre-market about 8 30 rejected off the 21 30s right there kind of came back up to 21s again another rejection and then it came all the way back up to 21s again on wednesday this was cpi day we sold off very aggressively and then sold right off of that 21 36 on the vix perfectly so that old april level from 2024 I keep telling you guys just mark those old levels the 2308 is all the way from 2023 the 21 36 is all the way from april and you can see how they work and this can give you a signal you know long spy qqq when vix falls back under 23 to 21 it comes back up and it's rejecting 21s again go long because so you can get a very big fall in the vix and a very big bounce in the market so just make sure you're marking those levels that we go over every single week i don't really have a special level for you this week obviously the max downside i was kind of expecting in the vix was 19 or so i mentioned if you know 23 wanted to reject i could see it down to 19 at least and we did get that we actually got all the way down to 1650s so a little bit further than i thought it would go and then for right now i don't think we really have any crazy ema signals we are at the 100 ema cloud 
and you kind of see a little sliver of the 200 EMA cloud. But otherwise, nothing really crazy here. Where's that 1571 coming from? I kind of want to see the origin of that. Ah, uh, okay. So the 1571 came from this right here, this little base out from before the big spike up to 65. I think I'm going to move that though. Let's go ahead and move this 1570s level to the 1446. We can also mark this little wick low since something happened in this big candle. So the day before we got down to 1470s, the day after big 37, 40% pop in the VIX. So let's go ahead and mark that 1470s to 1446. If VIX gets back down to here, it's probably a good time to take on a hedge in the market. Cause every time we got to it right here, and also right here, you can kind of see a sharp reversal in the VIX short term. So watch that 1470s to 1440s. Uh, for right now though, I don't really see the VIX going higher until we start closing back over 18. So that 18 comes from this little rejection zone right here and a breakout zone right here. So over 18, this is kind of your free space back up to 21, 23, etc. But for right now, I don't really see a signal that makes me think the VIX is going to go higher except for a spy at supply, but we don't have a rejection candle yet. So I can't really give you a prediction on that. Am I skeptical with spy at supply? Yes. But for right now, I would need to see VIX over 18 to kind of expect really any pop in the VIX, any downside in the market. So just watch those two areas. If we get back down to 1476, it's probably a good idea to start looking at spy puts 30 days out if we get down to this zone. Another good area to look at spy puts. If uh, VIX gets back over 18 and starts closing back over it, you can definitely look at spy puts again. Again, assuming you have your supply rejection confirmed hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like comment and subscribe hopefully our setups are as good as last week it's a little bit harder to find stuff this week last week i just felt pretty good about just blasting longs and everything and worked pretty good for dollar general worked really good for nvidia and also worked good you know day trading qqq calls a couple losses but that's okay pretty good week last week hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys enjoyed tuning in every week and i love you i'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up sent out try to get it done early get it up at a good hour and i love you and i'm out there's a reason why xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas with over 2.5 million dollars paid in the last two years to contributors users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time if you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.